obviously chased down. And as the story goes, one of the shots took a piece of flesh off of the animal that when they picked it up, looked old and decayed and, and everything like that. So again, I haven't had any dire wolves come up to me, thankfully. Um, but, you know, that's one of the famous stories of lore, just of the peculiar things that have, have happened to this family while they were property owners of the ranch. Right, and, and not only did the tracks disappear, but they seemed to disappear in such a way where it wasn't like the animal then would have proceeded into tall brush where there wouldn't be tracks. There should have been tracks. It was just gone. Inexplicable. And, I mean, that was definitely one story having to do with cattle on the ranch. Um, Linda, you've studied this phenomenon elsewhere, all over, as well as Skinwalker Ranch, the idea of cattle mutilation. There have been numerous ones. What do you know about particular episodes reported on Skinwalker Ranch, and what is so strange about how these animals are found? Well, um, if I could, I would like to tell the strangest thing that Sherman told me when I interviewed him back in 1996. Uh, in fact, it was that radio interview that I did with Art Bell, uh, interviewing Sherman, that uh, Robert Bigelow heard, and that was why he went uh, to the Shermans and ended up buying the ranch to investigate. But the, it always haunted me, talking with Mr. Sherman, who was going about, uh, talking to me about how they had animal mutilations, told the story that you just told, uh, said that uh, it had only been a couple of nights before I was interviewing him for radio that they had red glowing lights, several of them coming through the house. And what I remember is he was not afraid and he was not talking about his family being afraid. He was talking about how frustrated and angry he was that these red lights and this phenomena wouldn't leave them alone. And then he said, and one night, I saw, after we had a lot of red lights in the kitchen, I saw this yellow-orange light, and it was down in a pasture that was kind of down to the front of their uh, house. And he said, I just felt so angry, I got my 30 odd six, and I started moving fast toward this yellow light. And he said, and I got down there and realized it was a huge craft, and it was only about 50 feet above me, and maybe even a little closer. And he said, I got down below, and I could look up through some kind of a window, and there were two men. He described them as wearing plaid shirts, and said that he could hear in his mind, not to his ears, that they were arguing and that one of them was saying, well, should we tell him? And the other one was saying, no, he would never ever understand why we are here. And Sherman, in telling me that, said, whatever we are dealing with on this ranch, one of the things that they want seems to be our cattle. They want animals. And here you get to the weird area of animal mutilations, that he had dealt with everything from uh, six, I think it was six large bulls that were somehow trapped inside of a small uh, trailer house, all kinds of weird things. It was actually four? Four. And that here is where I began to interface uh, with Sherman about what I had discovered in interviews with law enforcement and veterinarians that left them unable to stand in front of a news crew and say this is what we found because they had no explanation. Uh, there were many mutilations at that time in the 90s where there were no chest excisions but when they would do an autopsy, they would find that the entire heart was missing from inside the pericardium, inside of a chest, and a grown animal uh, heart will be something like seven by nine by 11 inches. And that the, uh, the disappearance of an entire heart, a 
inside a pericardium without leaving any cuts on the pericardium was always one of the most astonishing uh, hard forensic pieces of evidence and then sheriffs would run into the problem that the veterinarian never wanted to say anything publicly. Sherman and I talked about this that night when I interviewed him about everything that was happening on the ranch. And he asked me, he said, why do you think that there is, whether it's extraterrestrial, which is what he thought was inside of that crap, why are extraterrestrial uh, doing these almost um, like playing a game, taunting them, taunting them with the impossible. And the only answer that I or law enforcement would have the same discussion is intimidation. To intimidate humans in an area that the extraterrestrials want to keep working and being. And that is what I took away from the Sherman Ranch, in addition to the phenomenon that something was literally trying to control humans and actually get humans out of there. And I'll throw the question back to the panel. I've always wondered whether anybody did scientific investigation of what is under the Uinta Basin, what is under the Sherman Ranch, in terms of possible limestone running water where we find phenomena in other areas of the world. I don't know if anybody has done that work.